How's it going everyone? It's Harvey from Weather SpongeBob Thousand and I hope you guys are having a great day. So I'm not gonna waste any time. Let's go straight into the Christmas time period where there is a possibility of a snowstorm moving through the Great Lakes as well as the Northeast region. Take a look at the latest run of the European model. I'm gonna talk about the this um, current nor'easter in a second, but I want to go a little bit more forward in the more long-term future because I know you guys are definitely hoping for snowfall in many areas of the Midwest and Northeast and there this could be our next possibility for a lot of the areas that haven't received snow yet so we do see that on Friday um, December 22nd there will be a small low pressure system moving through the Midwest and as it does so we see that the area of snowfall expands and this is due to the fact that we're going to see a decent jet stream dip right over the Great Lakes as well as the Northeast that's going to enhance the instability enough for there to be convective activity activity as well as snow showers and rain showers developing and it's going to be a um based on what the european model is forecasting right now it's a very weak low pressure system it definitely needs more instability before i could really call this a pretty big snowstorm it seems like it's going to be um a small snowmaker by the looks of it as of right now but there's still very much in the long-term future so stay tuned for more updates because you never know a lot could change between now and december 23rd we're only at december 15th so um eight nine days from now a lot could change when it comes to the instability as well as the exact trajectory of the storm system we're definitely gonna need to pay close attention to some of the details but you do see by december 23rd and um, headed into christmas eve we do see some snow showers over pennsylvania um, this impacts a little bit of New York City and Philadelphia as well and based on the looks of it it looks like it's less than an inch of snow but it's always something to be aware of especially when we do see a small area of instability by the time we approach a Christmas time period and even if it's just a little bit of snowfall I'm sure it's better than nothing for a lot of you guys in the Northeast and the Great Lakes and it's of course still something um, to worry about because anything between one to three inches of snow could still cause havoc on the roadway so um, what's going to develop this storm is pretty much um, well this storm is going to originate off the Pacific coast we're going to see a low pressure system moving southward and moving ashore right up along the coast of California and just ahead of this main low pressure system we're going to see a smaller upper level low that's going to move just ahead of it and it, um, with an upper level low while it's disconnected with a jet stream it still has at least some cold air within its core to enhance the instability and that's how we see the storm system develop and the instability will only enhance things to this jet stream dip now the key thing that will determine if we'll see a more powerful storm or not is of course how much cold air is behind this upper level low at this point um it seems like this won't have a ton of cold air to work with since due to the fact that it's going to be an upper level low which pretty much means it's going to be cut off from the cold air that's located just to the north of the United States border and pretty much be in its own independent space where it's going to need to use its own um, cool air that's around low pressure system. However, I think a bigger key that will determine the strength of this storm system will be this jet stream dip right here. If it's a little bit more significant, then we could expect more instability for this storm to work with for potentially a more significant snowstorm in the northeast where we'd be talking about more than one inch of snow that's for certain however there is also that possibility that the jet stream might flatten out by the time this low this upper low low approaches the northeast which means that there won't be enough instability and we could see this um, there's still that possibility this could completely fizzle out by the time this approaches the great lakes and northeast it's still too far out to say right now the european model is taking a forecast where it does bring some snowfall to um the northeast um and it, and the instability and the amount of cold air that moves southward will depend on this clipper system that's going to move um almost at the same pace as this, as this upper level low if it moves a little bit southward then we should expect more cold air and more instability for a more significant snowstorm but if it moves a little bit for northward or if the timing is off where this moves a little bit slower or a little bit faster then that could mean the difference between 
this receiving enough cold air for a powerful storm or not enough cold air for this storm to develop at all. So the timing will also be key. Um, we're going to need to see um, this cool air um, be at a position where it can maximize um, the instability um, and it, and in order to do that it's gonna move it's gonna need to move a little bit faster to where um, or at least at around the same pace as a slow press system to where the cool air mass will be able to interact with it since they're so close in proximity but we're just gonna have to wait and see but definitely um Peco sent attention to this possibility over the Great Lakes and Northeast especially if you're hoping for a white Christmas because this could be our best shot um since it's been a very quiet winter um so far and then beyond that point we do see the European model does expect a more powerful low pressure system to develop in the Midwest with this 240 hours out I'll get more into detail with that if we continue to see the European model persist on that but for now um just take this with a huge grain of salt and same goes for this um clipper system as well take a look at what gfs model is forecasting when it comes to that same um upper level low so let me go to the 8 or the 12z run i forgot it's still relatively early in the day when i'm recording this video so the 18z run isn't out yet but um taking a look at what the gfs model is stating when it comes to 18z run of this upper level low so it does expect this low to pretty much move ashore in a very similar fashion moves ashore right up along the coast of southern california moves to arizona new mexico and eventually into the midwest and we do see that the gfs model doesn't expect as significant of a jet stream dip and that's huge because that means that this storm doesn't really strengthen all that much to the point where it pretty much just fizzles out by the time this approaches the ohio valley so the, um so um this low upper level low could go either um scenario whether it's the european model or the gfs model um so i'll definitely keep you guys updated what will determine the amount of cold air that will exist over this storm system will be due to this current nor'easter that's going to move through by the late weekend um if it if it ends up being a little bit more powerful that means that the northerly flow will be a bit more powerful which would allow for a more unstable environment to exist by the time the upper low low approaches the mississippi and ohio river valley so definitely pay keep tabs on this over the next several days as i'll keep you guys updated but let's say if the european model snowfall forecast was correct with this clipper system then it would it could dump a decent amount of snow anywhere from one to three to three to six inches of snowfall over a large portion of the northeast so that so ignore this snowfall this is from the nor'easter that again i'm gonna talk to you guys about in just a second but taking a quick look at the european mall snowfall forecast when it comes to this next potential um christmas low moving through um we do see that um a pretty large area of three to six inches of snowfall throughout pennsylvania this extends even into new jersey and new york city metropolitan area philadelphia is borderline seeing snowfall and then this extends into the northern great lakes as well so i'll keep you guys updated once we get more certainty with the forecast now let's backtrack to our next major nor'easter that's expected to impact the entirety of the east coast this weekend so here's what the european model is forecasting at around this time period we do see a pretty large area of rain showers um over the gulf of mexico this was expected thanks to this upper level low bringing a decent amount of instability right over the gulf of mexico but moving forward this storm rapidly intensifies and look at the heavy rainfall over florida this is very concerning not due to the fact that we could see major rivers flood but the possibility of flash flooding exists as well because this rainfall will fall at a very fast clip. Look at the yellows and the oranges. That represents very heavy rainfall rates that is certainly capable of bringing a high um, flash flood risk over the state of Florida and even areas further northward. And the millibar pressure is quite low as well. A coastal flood warning is in effect pretty much all throughout the east coast and even the southwest coast of Florida where the winds are expected to be strong enough um, to be able to pile that ocean water straight on shore which could lead to the possibility of flash flooding so if you live in flood prone areas whether it be um be right at the ocean or whether um it's um right by a river or a small creek 
you definitely need to be prepared and take precaution in case a flood impacts your area because it's certainly possible with a storm like this as we're seeing a rainfall forecast hover around three to five inches of rain which is certainly quite heavy and like i said it's going to fall at a very fast clip so flash flooding is certainly a high risk with this storm system and then eventually this should continue to head for northward by midday sunday we do see very heavy rainfall right over georgia and south carolina the flash flood risk is also high in those areas and this storm system will continue to intensify we see it the pressure drop down to the 980s and what's interesting is that the area of rainfall expands even further by the time it approaches northeast once it encounters even more instability from this um from this trough dip that is going to be right behind the storm system and we see the millibar pressure drop down to 977 millibars based on what the european model is forecasting which is certainly quite strong the winds should certainly be a concern throughout the northeast where up along the coast you should expect wind gusts potentially close to hurricane force maybe up to 70 miles per hour especially right around southeast massachusetts and even inland you should expect wind gusts of 40 to 50 miles per hour along with very heavy rainfall which should be your primary concern because flooding unfortunately is one of the leading causes of weather related deaths and this certainly will likely bring a major flood threat for the northeast especially since many areas this past weekend already got pounded by rainfall from this past trough that was moving through and now you're going to get another round here throughout the mid-atlantic and northeast where again the rain will be heavy at times the rainfall rates will be quite high and this is certainly a concern for much of the northeast and uh, and of course be prepared for damaging winds and coastal flooding is likely thanks to these damaging winds um as that's gonna have a lot the wind is gonna have a large area to where it's able to pile up the ocean and move it straight ashore so definitely be prepared for that scenario and then on the back side uh, we were talking about the possibility of snow with this storm system however it's pretty much guaranteed at this point this snowfall at, at least not um any major snowfall will move along the um coastal northeast there is that possibility you could experience maybe snow showers um later on monday and going into tuesday on the back side where we do see some snow showers move close to new york city and philadelphia and boston as well and we see a small low pressure system develop um just behind this main trough thanks to the instability that this storm is is inducing right over the northeast but nothing anything major to worry about outside if maybe you're in the interior northeast or the mid portion of pennsylvania where you could maybe at worst see um snowfall anywhere between one to three inches um while the coastal northeast mainly experiences flurries the GFS model is also forecasting much of the same thing with this nor'easter. We see the storm system move northward thanks to a ridge just to east of it. And it's going to move north enough and this ridge is going to be strong enough for this to entirely be a rain event for the northeast however this cold um, pocket that's going to move just so west of it will enhance the instability as well as the strength of this storm system so you should expect strong winds and heavy rainfall and a high amount of convective activity and a heavier amount of snowfall is possible especially lake effect snow right up along the great lakes and maybe some flurries right up along the coast just like what the european model is forecasting so here's the current rainfall forecast for the entirety of the east coast and this is very concerning pretty much we see large areas where um the east coast will exp likely experience three to five inches of rain which could cause major flooding in a lot of these areas this includes florida the coast of georgia south carolina north carolina extending into the mid-atlantic virginia delaware maryland new jersey pennsylvania Connecticut, New York, Massachusetts, and even as far north as Maine should experience rainfall that's anywhere between three, um, two to three to three to five inches of rain. Um, so you definitely need to be prepared for a major flood threat throughout the East Coast. And like I said, the wave heights will be another issue as well as the possibility of coastal flooding. We see that um, there's a storm right here and we could see wave heights anywhere between 20 to 30 feet right around the center of this storm system. And the winds will primarily be um, facing from a southeasterly direction, which I believe is the worst case scenario, especially for the mid-Atlantic since a southeasterly flow will mean that the wind over the ocean will, the duration of where the strong winds um, will be over the ocean 
will be maximized to the point where we're going to see a heavy amount of water just pour in right up along the east coast especially right into new york harbor which I, is why i believe that along with the strong winds and um that the wind direction will play a role in making the coastal flooding threat likely throughout the east coast and moving forward we do see it um the waves expand even more and you definitely need to be prepared for a high possibility of coastal flooding so here's a wind forecast provided from the GFS model and continuing to move forward. By the way, these are sustained winds, not gusts, but sustained and moving forward. And we do see that right up along the coast of Florida, you should expect sustained winds right around 30 miles per hour. This even moves a little bit further northward where you should expect winds anywhere between 25 to 30 miles per hour sustained. Of course, gusts will be a lot higher than that, probably um, around 50 miles per hour throughout um, Florida, especially right up along the coast and moving forward this wind x um, gets even stronger where right up along the coast of the outer banks you could experience sustained winds at 50 miles per hour which is very intense will likely cause power outages and right over the delmar peninsula as well you could expect sustained winds right around 30 miles per hour and southern new jersey will get involved with this as well where maybe in areas um, such as new york harbor you could experience sustained winds of 30 miles per hour and the southeasterly flow which will push a lot of that water right up along the bay and the winds should be the worst right around new england coast so definitely be prepared for wind gusts anywhere between 50 to 60 miles per hour but that's it for now guys i thank you guys for watching make sure to like if you do enjoy this video and make sure to comment down below if you have any questions or what do you think is going to happen with this next christmas um snowstorm just let me know anything that comes in your mind down below um and i'll make sure to give you guys maybe an answer if, if in case you ask a question or we could have just a little discussion in the comment section um i want to know your guys's thoughts so let me know down below but i thank you guys for watching